Nick Willis, his third consecutive final, got a silver in Beijing, and even though he's getting on in the years, he still looks sharp. So, Asbel Kiprot aiming for a slice of history here. This is the final of the men's 1500 metres. So, will it be a tactical start? It appears so. Bustos has gone out to the front with Matty Centrovitz on his shoulder and Blankenship also there. And already they're playing into the hands of the sprint finishers. And as if to bear fruit to that argument, Asbel Kiprot right off the back, not interested. Igida just ahead of him, Suleiman on the curve. McCluffy's tucked it on the inside. And for men of their class, this is an absolute jog at the moment. Interesting to note that Nick Willis is up in the middle of the pack. There he is on the left of your picture. Now, normally he likes to run smothered up on the inside. He's got himself into a position where he's a little wider out, but they are doing little more than walking down as they come past the judge with three laps to go. Kiprop at the back of the field, content to sit back there. McCluffy's found himself in the middle of the field. Gregson, the Australian, the first Australian in a 1500 metres final in 40 years, is poised behind Centrowitz as they go through the the first lap they certainly have not broken any records 66.83 it's absolutely pedestrian here and this is playing into the hands of those who like it run in exactly this fashion among those is Taufik McCluffy he's quite happy treating this as a two-lap warm-up for a 400 meter sprint to the line and you can see him getting sandwiched there between Brennan on the inside and Musagala on his outside this is absolutely pedestrian by the quality that these men can produce at speed if they need to. We've got four of the top ten fastest men in history, and this is a pace that they wouldn't even dream of Whoops. doing. Oh, and there's a faller, it's Quemoy. And that's what happens. And even Asbel Kiprop there gets his heels clipped. And that's what can happen when it's too slow, and I think they'll begin to speed up. Ronald Quemoy. The eighth fastest athlete in history dropped off the back there, but because it's so slow, he's been able to get back to that group, but they all need to watch their feet here because it can so often happen when they're running this tight. 69.77 for the next lap. Now they're starting to roll along a little bit. Suleiman's getting interested in getting up to the front of the race. Nick Willis hasn't had the best of luck, but now he's got himself behind the leader on the plinth in third. That's the way he likes to run. After making that run, Kip Rop has now been shuffled right out the back of the field, and he finds himself with only three behind him. Gregson is one of them, and let's have a look for McCluffy. He's getting to the outside with about five behind him. And Asbel Kip Rop has found himself off the pace here. He's got to be really careful because this is the kind of race where upsets can happen. Oh. They take the bell, oh. and there's all sorts of shoving and barging going on. It's McCluffy trying to run wide on the outside. Centre of its leads. Is this his day to produce a glorious moment for the United States? Igida's right there. So too McCluffy. And Asbel Kiprop now coming up onto the shoulder of the leaders. Centre of its and Kiprop. And now the field beginning to spread. 200 metres to go. Kiprop is poised to strike. He's put himself in the right place. But there are real sprinters outside him. This isn't over yet. Centrovitz desperate to get a first Olympic medal. But McCluffy's coming on the outside. Asbel Kiprop's tying up. It's not going to be Kiprop's day. Centrovitz can sense glory. But McCluffy's coming. Can he hang on? Centrovitz is the Olympic champion. McCluffy the silver. And bronze, can you believe it, to Nick Willis of New Zealand. Centrovitz has damaged the field there with an incredible last lap. He went so early. Asbel Kiprop, the overwhelming favourite, was right on his shoulder. And he has done it. What an incredible, incredible victory there for Matty Centrovitz. The last American winner was over a century ago, and somewhere in the stands, his father will be in tears. These are the moments these men dream of. Kiprop had his day in Beijing.
but that was eight years ago. He put himself in the right place, but he couldn't strike. And even McCloofy, after that silver in the eight, couldn't quite get past Matthew Centrovitz. His dream has come true. He is the Olympic 1500 metre champion. And can you believe it? Their official time is 24 seconds outside the world record. That is how pedestrian the pace was. And Centrovitz ran it from the front of the race. And he said, well, I've got a kick finish, just as you guys have. It looked as though I was going to be keen early on when a couple came out, including the Spaniard Bustos. But then down went Quemoy. And the pace was so slow that he was able to get himself back on within about the space of 40 metres. But it really got keen just towards the bell. McCluthy and uh, Kiprop had a shoving match as they came down with a lap to go. But look at Centrovitz. He held his form so well. It was the great champion in Kiprop who looked as though he might be the danger as they went down the back straight. McCluthy had a bit of a kick and it seemed as though he might run over the American. Willis gets out late, but he's done it at both ends, Centrowitz, and he deserves the gold medal. It's a brilliant, brave bid for glory when you've got so much quality queuing up for a sprint finish behind you. He just missed a medal four years ago in London and was bitterly disappointed. He set himself up for a great season, winning the world indoors on home turf in Portland, and he was razor sharp in that run. I was there to watch. But McCloofy and Kiprop both had their chances to create history there and join Seb Coe as double winners. They were both in exactly the right place, but come the moment, they did not have the strength to live with Matty Centrovitz. Two incredible athletes to beat. With 150 to go, it looked like it was destined to be either Kiprop or McCloofy's day. Not so, said the American, who found himself in dreamland as he looked up at the big screen. With the climax of their careers, with their medals by Lord Sebastian Coe. Well, there would have been a lot of people watching in New Zealand. What a fine career it's been for Nick Willis, his third consecutive final. It wasn't quite a replica of the legendary exploits of Lovelock, Snell and John Walker 40 years ago. But a silver in Beijing, a little fist pump there. He is a masterful tactician. And while all around him were beginning to crumble, Willis kept his composure and he has a second Olympic medal. And you know that Sepko would have enjoyed watching that race. World indoor bronze earlier this year. He looked pin sharp and still going well as he flourishes into his 30s. Nick Willis takes the bronze. In America, it's enjoying a resurgence. And I think there may well be a few young boys asking their mums and dads if they can go down to their local athletics club. And surely that's one of the most important things achieved with these Olympic Games. It's not just about the place in the history books and the medals that gather dust. It's the fire that is lit in the next generation of athletes who watch what these Herculean men and women achieve and aspire to their own piece of greatness in 10 or 20 years' time. And interestingly,